Hello, I'm I'm a Dragon, and we start with narration. Her heart held the greatest power ever known. It could create life itself. Maui, shapeshifter, steals a magical stone, the heart of Tafiti, gets punched out by Taka, lava monster, and loses both the stone and his magic fish hook. Our narrator turns out to be telling some kids a story. Oh, 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 thank you, mother, that's enough. No one goes outside the wreath. We are safe here. Aw, oh, jeez. Please not another we stay here and never move or do anything interesting out of concern for safety kind of people. We all know that they're just gonna bunker down in that dogmatic foxhole despite clear evidence that it's ineffective. In some commotion, Baby Moana runs off to the shore and helps a little turtle into the ocean instead of chasing a pretty shell. And the, uh, the ocean takes note of this and gives her a shell. And then another. And then hands her that stone we saw earlier and this is becoming a chosen one story now, isn't it? I really hope it's not, but I guess we'll see. There you are, Moana. What are you doing? You scared me. Anyways, first musical number. Where you are. Moana must be on the ground now. Our people will need a cheap and there you are. It's alright. It's a good way of introducing Mato Nui and its culture, and one thing stands out above everything else. The island gives us what we need. That's right, we stay. Yeah, it's a bit culty. And by the end of it, Moana seems to have given in and given up this crazy notion of ocean travel. Silly notion, that one. By the way, why do you have boats? And, P.S., you live on a pretty small island. Just, just pointing that out. After the song, we get Moana tending to village duty stuff. We then come to our big issue. The coconuts are bad, and there's no fish anywhere, so we've got a food issue. Moana has a solution. I'm sure what we if we fish beyond the reef? Which is firmly rejected with no other solution proposed because Dad is a plot device more than he's a character. No one goes beyond the reef. But he's a plot device with a tragic backstory. He crossed the reef and found an unforgiving sea. His best friend begged to be on that boat. Your dad couldn't save him. So I guess that makes it better. Musical number the second, How Far I'll Go. And no one knows how far it goes. Girl's got some vocal cords on her. Beyond that, it forces you to yearn for that same wanderlust that Moana's got. Starting at the sea with this slow trudge to the top of the mountain, then having it call her back down from the very top of said mountain. And she turns so damn fast. There's a lot to point out, but long story short, the song is killer. Moana's off on her epic journey now. She's gonna find food and save the village. Or, uh, maybe instead of that, she won't. Crazy Grandma shows up to act strange. He was right. About going out there. Okay. Well, then head on back. Is there something you want to tell me? Is there something you want to hear? She shows Moana to a secret cavern where there is a bunch of ships and such. Moana bangs on one of the drums, and in the sails, she sees our third musical number. We know the way. Away, away. The song is incredible from a technical standpoint, with part of it sung in Tokelauin, which has like 5,000 speakers worldwide, and part of it sung in English. We set a course to find a brand new island everywhere we roam. And all of it flows together in the same cadence, which is just beautifully put together. It's not as good from an entertainment standpoint, but it's still very good. But just, the amount of effort put into this, just, ah, I love effort. Effort is so good. So anyways, Moana's very excited about this. Then, Grandma explains the stuff that I had questions about. Why'd we stop? Mm, Maui. When he stole from the Mother Island, darkness fell. To protect our people, the ancient chiefs forbid voyaging. And now we have forgotten who we are and hands Moana the heart of Tafiti. After learning about her chosen oneness, she then decides to invite others on her chosen one journey. There's a cavern of boats! Huge canoes! We can take them, find Maui, make him restore the heart. 
Guess how the plot device takes it. I should have burned those boats a long time ago. Uh, wait, hold up. Now I have some questions. You knew about this secret cavern? Grandma did too, but I assume that just comes with being the crazy lady. Who else knew? Is this like a chief's lineage secret that's totally irrelevant to anything because it's all about keeping something hidden when they could have been burnt a long time ago, thus eliminating the need to hide it? If not, then how hasn't Moana heard about these boats before? And if not destroying them, were you planning on using them again sometime? Clearly not, because of how dead set against it you are. Maybe for historical significance? Again, clearly not, because you're keeping them hidden. And all of this because they had to make a character into a plot device. Just have him be angry again and ditch this line. I should have burned those boats a long time ago. Then you're fine. It's little, but geez, does the chief knowing about the boats make no sense whatsoever. Anyways, Grandma is dying and she tells Moana that she's gotta head out. So she does so during a hell of a reprise. Now Moana's actually on her own, with this idiot chicken. Also, Moana has no idea what she is doing here, and I like that a lot. Sailing is hard. A storm beaches the ship on an island of no importance. Oh, and Maui's there. And here is where things get irritating. Maui is a jerk, full of jokes that will age like milk left out of the fridge. When you use a bird to write with, it's called tweeting. And self-importance. <laughs> I know, not every day you get a chance to meet your hero. Then he sings a song about how great he is, which is exactly what I didn't want. You're welcome. What can I say except you're welcome for the tides, the sun, the sky. I hate this song. The tune is fine enough and the performance is surprisingly not that rocky, but the subject matter is dumb. Beyond that, it's got the worst 25 seconds of music Disney has ever put out. Honestly, I could go on and on. I could explain every natural phenomenon. A rap break? One where you make a terrible basketball reference that falls apart under any kind of scrutiny? What's the lesson? What is the takeaway? Don't mess with Maui when he's on a breakaway. Ugh. The visuals are pretty nice though. I like the 2D stylings, and more importantly, it introduces Maui's tattoo, who is infinitely cooler than Maui is. We transition from your welcome to attempted murder. He's just gonna leave her in this cave and without a boat. And you made a shrine to yourself? Well, whatever. Moana gets out of the cave and pursues with grace. <laughs> Then with some assistance from the ocean. More attempted murder. This is my canoe, and you will journey to death. Alright, get over it. We gotta move. Past that, Moana starts using the heart as a threat. Are you afraid of it? No. No. <laughs> I'm not afraid. Yes! Make the asshole suffer. Taunt him more. Little coconut pirate guys show up on this raft looking straight out of Waterworld. We then get a nice little action scene with lots of chaos and cute models and... <laughs> what? That better have been a one-time thing. After escaping, Moana guilt trips Maui into going along with her mission. And more attempted murder! Remind me, why do we like this guy? We get some sailing lessons and lackluster comedy. One is blunt meta humor that only works if you've seen enough Disney movies. If you wear a dress and you have an animal sidekick, you're a princess. Otherwise, it's entirely nonsensical and doesn't fit with the setting whatsoever. The other is a pee joke. If the current's warm, you're going the right way. It's cold. Wait, it's getting warmer. Ugh. <sighs> Scary apocalypse dream, and they hit land where Maui's hook supposedly is. Maui starts telling Moana about how the ocean is dumb for choosing her for this mission. Makes sense. You're what, eight? Can't sail? Obvious choice. At the top, more meta humor. It's not as blunt, but it makes less sense. If you start singing, I'm gonna throw up. The only one bursting into song since you've been together is you, Maui. So, Maui opens the portal to where they're actually going and jumps in. 
And it turns out that cry is going to be repeated. <laughs> Fun. Okay, fine. That line's funny. Adventures in the Realm of Monsters. I love the design of this place. There's so many cool things, and you look up and you see the ocean like some kind of awesome aquarium. Very nice. They find his hook, and Moana's a distraction. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. You're not selling it. This is stupid. I'm just gonna walk up and get it. Then she gets caught by Tamatoa. Tamatoa is the best character. Are you just trying to get me to talk about myself? Because if you are, I will gladly do so. Another musical number, Shiny. I'd rather be shiny like a treasure from a sunken pirate wreck. The musical number is so good. Why you ask? Well, to start, the song is lots of fun alone. But what really makes it is how the song and the visuals sync up. There's little glints from his gold encrusted shell on the shinies. The cinematography is phenomenal. It gets kind of fever dreamy near the end. And most importantly, Maui gets beat. And he gets beat hard. The two escape from Tamatoa through trickery. Hey, hey, did you like the song? Yeah, yeah, I did. And here, Maui isn't a terrible person anymore. So that's nice. For a little girl, child, Thing, whatever, who had no business being down there. You did me a solid. He's still really defeatist, though, in a fun way, at least. What can I say except we're dead soon? We're dead soon. We get a nice little speech from Moana, followed by some bonding between them. But the gods aren't the ones who make you Maui. You are. And it turns out all Maui needed to be good at things again was a pep talk. Sailing montage stuff. So, the two actually reach Tafiti, and there's a brief encounter with that lava monster. It does not go well. Then, it does not get better. And Maui's hook is cracked. He then decides to get all defeatist and jackass again. Without my hook, I am nothing. That's not true! Without my hook, I am nothing! Before ditching a crying girl. The ocean chose me! It chose wrong. And now this is something totally new. You know that whole chosen one thing? Yeah, well, Moana tells the ocean... Choose someone else. Please. And offers the heart back to it. And the ocean takes it. That is something that I was not expecting whatsoever. Shortly after, Spirit Grandma shows up. There is a very beautiful piece, officially named I Am Moana, open parentheses, Song of the Ancestors, close parentheses. But it's mostly just a hybrid of the Where You Are and How Far I'll Go reprises. Sometimes the world seems against you, the journey may leave a scar. And the world is out there it all, it's inside me. It's pretty goddamn fantastic. And at the end of it, she swims down and takes up the heart once more. When she finishes her mission, it's going to be because of who she is, instead of her being inherently destined for greatness. And that is something that's incredible. She then heads back to Tafiti alone. Through some determination and trickery, she gets through the barrier islands. And with most of the hard work done, Maui returns after no prompting or anything, and... Why? Is there a reason? You came back! <laughs> Moana, finding Tafiti gone, realizes something. And in another beautifully shot and beautifully performed scene, Moana restores the heart to the center of the spiral on Tika. Tika is then restored to a lush green woman island. Maui apologizes and is given a new hook. Then Tafiti resumes her resting place as the island. Maui gets a new tattoo detailing his journey with Moana, she returns back home where things are growing again, and we close. Well, let's start off with the good. The overall production is above and beyond Disney's standard, which is already incredibly high. Obviously the water. Dear God, is this water gorgeous, and we spend a good long time looking at it. 
Then, when it's used as a character, it loses a little bit of the visual quality, but it makes it back in charm, easily. Even outside of the water, this movie looks very good. Whoever decided to make Maui's tattoo a character is a genius, providing a whole new 2D canvas to play with. Maui's shapeshifting looks really smooth, and there's a bunch of his personality that gets carried over in his new forms. Oh, and Shiny. Shiny has the best visual and audio mix of any Disney musical number to date. And speaking of music, Moana does not slouch there either. We Know The Way is among the best we've gotten regarding immersion into a culture. How Far I'll Go gives goosebumps every single time. And Shiny, again, is just so much fun. Add in I Am Moana joining two reprises into a single song and you have got a killer lineup. Where You Are isn't even bad, it's just left behind in comparison to the others. Then there's You're Welcome. I'll say this, it is a very fitting intro to Maui as a character, but it's just... it's just bad. It's really bad. The narrative is alright. It takes a little bit to actually get into what I like most about it, which is as soon as she gets off the island. But once it does, it's solid. I get why they needed to have Moana doubt herself and add internal struggles and all of that, but it's not why you watch the movie. It kind of reminds me of the Odyssey with just the individual trials one after another after another, and that works very well considering that this is a mythical story itself. So let's get into our characters. Moana's a bunch of fun, and it's nice that she struggles a lot with sailing and her journey, although she does parkour that I'd call out as unrealistic if Batman did it. And the girl who plays her, Ali'i Cravalho. She had better be going places. Girls got talent. Crazy Grandma is a lot of fun, and the Chief is pretty stereotypical, but that's not the worst thing. Outside of that one line, of course. Hey, Hey's a riot, as is Tamatoa. Maui, on the other hand, is the worst. Self-righteous. So what I believe you were trying to say is thank you. Arrogant. It's actually Maui shapeshifter, demigod of the wind and sea, hero of men. I interrupted from the top, hero of men. Go. Juvenile. Ah, oh, that is disgusting. Mean. All right, get over it. We got to move. Selfish. You can't restore the heart without me, and me says no. You getting my hook? End of discussion. And generally just a significant blemish on this gem of a movie. The first thing he does is cause the main problem, followed by attempted murder repeatedly, and he's supposed to be a protagonist. Nothing illustrates this better than the middle of Shiny. While Moana's about to be eaten, Maui spends 20 seconds taunting Tamatoa and worshipping himself, even though she's the reason he's able to get his hook back in the first place. And I hate this stupid battle cry that sounds like Akon in The Sweet Escape. I get that most of these are done for humor, but he does them all the time. And when they're done so often, they're no longer things. They are the character. Oh wait, he had a tragic backstory? He was orphaned? You want me to list all the other Disney orphans who behave better? What about the ones who still clearly had issues, but didn't absolutely suck? Look, like him if you want, but the character was irredeemable for me since he tried killing the girl who would save him. Then they tried to redeem him twice. The first makes him tolerable. The second time is out of nowhere and out of character. So look, I get it if you think this is the best movie ever, because at parts I can totally agree with you, but then there are pee jokes, and graceless Disney princess references, and a character who's a plot device, and a character who'd be better as a plot device, and I just think, is this really what I want? Its highs are damn high, but the lows are just confusing. Overt references to themselves that make no sense without greater context? jokes about peeing in the ocean? Or, better yet, a musical where Dwayne The Rock Johnson gets his own song, but Nicole, better as a singer than an actress and nominated for an Olivier Award for context as the British equivalent of a Tony Award Scherzinger, doesn't? How did anybody even think they could justify that? Next 
next time, I've got a special Christmas gift for you, even if it might be a little late. <laughs>